Hello and welcome to New Mama Meg. I'm Meg, it's nice to see you again. If you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad you found me. My goal in starting this channel was just to be able to share my experiences in hopes that it could help new parents maybe avoid some of the mistakes that I made, offer some tips on things that really worked well for us, and also just open up conversations that you might not be having with other people. One of the biggest things that helped me while I was a new mom was, that's weird because like he's over a year now, so now I can say was a new mom, is having friends who were going through similar things. And Finn was born, I didn't have any friends. I ended up reaching out, found some people in my neighborhood, and I've gotten really close with some of those people. If you don't have someone who you feel super comfortable sharing different things with, or someone who's maybe going through similar things as you, you can use this channel to know that you're not alone. You can also reach out to me on Instagram and I'm happy to be there to support you however I possibly can. So you can find me at newmama underscore Meg, and I'm always here for you. So let's get into today's video. So the timing of this video couldn't be any better because it is actually breastfeeding awareness month. So originally I was just gonna talk about weaning and share my experience of trying to wean Finn, not fully off the boob, but start to wean him down a little bit just because of routine changes and things like that. But some things have changed in our breastfeeding journey and I'm gonna share them with you. In some of my other recent videos, I'd mentioned that I'd gotten so many questions about weaning and when are you gonna wean? What, what's your plan for weaning and all that kind of stuff. And I kept saying, I don't know, I haven't thought about it. Like breastfeeding is working for us. We're gonna just keep going until something changes. And so I thought we had many, many, many more months until that change was gonna happen. Um, yeah, little did I know that was not gonna be the case. I probably should have done some more research on this, but I was just planning on listening to my body, listening to Finn, kind of seeing how things went, but we kind of ended up screwing ourselves over in the end, so that's a bit frustrating, but let me share the details with you. Once I started back at work about five or six weeks ago, obviously our schedule and our routine changed dramatically. I was spending every day, all day with Finn, and that's what we've been doing for the last year. And obviously, now that I'm working, yes, I'm working from home, but I'm still working full time, so I can't be downstairs with him, playing with him, doing all that stuff. So before when we'd be home, we'd be in the middle of playing or doing something, and he would just want a drink, so I'd whip it out, and he would have a drink, no big deal. And if you're a breastfeeding mom, you know that the way that you continue to produce milk is to continue feeding your baby. The more they drink, the more milk's gonna come in. And so when our schedule changed, and I was only able to feed him kind of when he woke up in the morning, maybe before one of his naps at lunchtime, and then again, like once we got home, we were missing two or three feedings throughout the day. And because of this, my supply changed drastically. Again, it's not something I was prepared for. I didn't really think ahead. I didn't think, okay, this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna have to do this big switch up but this is what happened. And so over the first two and three weeks, I started to notice that breastfeeding was getting a little bit more difficult. He would have to work a lot harder for the milk to come out, which wasn't really the case for us. We've had a pretty solid breastfeeding journey so far. It hasn't always been easy, but we didn't face some of the challenges that I know many, many women go through, which makes things really hard. Um, which I'm very thankful for. So when I started to notice that he was getting less milk, I was like, oh crap, he needs to get a certain amount of milk a day. And if he can't get it from me, then he has to drink cow's milk. And at this point I hadn't started doing the cow's milk either. So again, like I probably should have started a little bit earlier, but I didn't. So I started panicking and started reading, okay, how do you introduce cow's milk to a breastfed baby? And the way that I recommend introducing it is giving them a bottle that's filled with half breast milk and half cow's milk. So I was like, okay, sure, let me go and pump. I had some pumped milk that I had in the freezer that was like getting close to to having to throw it out because it had been in there for a while. And then when I took it out, it was not good. So I was like, okay, I can't use this. Let me try and pump again. So two nights in a row, I saddled up, put the pump on, tried all the different settings, pumped for 20 minutes. I power pumped. I would try and do all these kinds of different things. And I did not get one drop. Not one drop. So definitely started freaking out at this point. I just knew he wasn't gonna like the taste of cow's milk. He loves breast milk. He's not gonna wanna switch over so easily. Also, because of all this pumping, I ended up getting a clogged milk duct, which is like, oh, it's so, so painful. The way that I describe it, it's, it's really weird. It's not what you expect, but if you were to like fully scrape your knee and there's like an exposed wound and then your baby like sucks on that wound. Disgusting, but that's honestly how it feels. And it's so painful. It hurts so bad. I also could not get rid of this clogged duct. So I did the Epsom salt bath. I did a hot comb press, I massaged it, like everything that I could read, I tried to do all this stuff and nothing worked. I think it took like a week or a week and a half before this finally went away and the pain went away. So anyway, that was not fun. So once mixing breast milk and cow's milk was off the table because I just simply could not pump any breast milk, I was trying to figure out what else I could do to entice him to drink this milk a little more. So breast milk is typically a little bit sweeter than cow's milk would be. And so I'm like, okay, how can I sweeten this up without it being like, hey, let me add some sugar or some syrup or like 
chocolate syrup. Like I wasn't prepared to do that. I wanted to find a different solution. So what I ended up doing was taking like the tiniest chunk of banana and I would mix it into the amount of milk that we needed for that day and blended it all up. So it was, it was still very thin, like just a little bit thicker than milk consistency. And then I gave that to him. So first time he tried it, he was like, Ugh, no, no, thank you. Don't want this, get out of here. Okay, um, and we just kept trying. So I'd add a little bit more banana and then I would add a little bit more milk and just kind of keep going. So now it's been about three or four weeks that we've been trying to do that and it depends on the day. Some days he wants to drink the entire cup, some days he wants nothing to do with it. You like your milk? Hey. Say hi. Where's your milk? Where's your milk? Okay. So I don't know where we're gonna end up with that, um, but keeping in mind that babies have to get a certain amount of nutrients every single day that used to come from the breast milk, I started introducing other things. So I went out and bought cottage cheese, he eats a lot of yogurt, um, made his scrambled eggs like with butter in the pan, just different ways to get that dairy into his diet. Once they're a year old, they're not getting all their nutrients from your breast milk anyway. So it wasn't like, oh no, he's gonna be missing out on everything he needs. No, it was more just he would drink for comfort. Yes, there obviously are tons of nutritional benefits from continuing with breast milk, but they do need stuff beyond that as well. So I also got him a new cup to go with this milk banana smoothie thing that we'll call it. And I found that changing the cup definitely did help a little bit. Again, didn't make all the difference in the world because he's still struggling with it, but it definitely helped a little bit. When I talked to my doctor about this, she wasn't super concerned. He's a big boy, he's growing well, he eats well. So it wasn't a major concern that he wasn't gonna have the same amount of breast milk that he'd been having. So that was reassuring anyway. I felt a lot better after I talked to her about it. So that is a very long winded way of telling you that the weaning process is still in progress. He is not completely weaned yet, which I am happy about. I did have a moment the other day where it was like 20 minutes that he was trying to get milk and nothing was happening. And I got really emotional because I'm not mentally ready for this to be over. I thought I would have the choice of when this was gonna stop. And maybe I do because sometimes he gets milk and sometimes it's fine and it's no problem. But other days, and it's almost like most days now, it seems like it's much more of a struggle than it used to be. So I was actually talking to a friend about it the other day. She's also a mom and um, I was just, you know, sharing my story and what's going on and things like that. And I started to cry because it's just, it's such a special thing that he and I get to do together. And I feel so fortunate that I've been able to do it as long as I have. The part that's making it harder is that I didn't get to decide when this was gonna be done. It's just my body telling me that, okay, we're maybe moving on to the next phase and it's totally fine. It's just hard to like accept that it's almost over. There's so many things that happen where you're like, okay, this baby is not a baby anymore. And I feel like this one is the biggest one and this one hit me the hardest. Like he's a growing big giant boy. And so it's like, we don't have this little itty bitty baby anymore. And obviously you want nothing more than your baby to grow up and be this you know, healthy kid and all that stuff. And we're so fortunate to have such a big healthy boy but it doesn't make it any easier when it is time for them to grow up and you have to kind of let these things go. Anyway, so I've been struggling with that a little bit in the last few weeks, but I will get over it, I will get through it, and it'll be something that we can look back on and be so proud of ourselves for sticking with it and be so happy that we were able to do it and all kinds of other good things. So a couple things that have happened since breastfeeding has slowed down a lot. I don't know if these are related, but I'm just thinking in my mind that there's some sort of correlation between the fact that the breastfeeding has really slowed down and my hormones are maybe like leveling out to what they were a couple years ago before getting pregnant being pregnant, being a breastfeeding mom and all those crazy things. I feel like I have gained a few pounds and I don't know if it's actually true about, you know, breastfeeding helps lose weight. I don't know, if, I don't know, right? But I've gained a few pounds and this could also be because I'm back at work and I'm sitting at a desk all day. So anyway, that's super fun. So I need to move my booty way more than I am. Um, and also my hormonal acne has started acting up again. I never had acne growing up. Like I never had pimples, nothing. And then when I was like 23, 24, I started getting hormonal acne always on my chin. Always, like I didn't get it anywhere else. It was just on the chin. And they're like these deep, gigantic, massive pimples that hurt so, so bad. So up until I got pregnant, I used to get them every month. Super annoying, so frustrating. You can barely even cover them up. I have like layers of foundation and cover up on them and you can probably still see them here. And then I haven't had them for the past couple of years. And then again, since things have slowed down, breastfeeding has slowed down and hormones are maybe leveling out a little bit, boom, two of them show up. Not just one, not just one big old deep one, two. So that's been super fun. Anyway, whatever, I'm just venting, just go with me. So anyway, 
that's where we're at with all this. I want to reiterate, I feel so fortunate that I've been able to breastfeed for the past 13, almost 14 months now. I know that this isn't the case for everyone, so it is not lost to me that I'm fortunate to have been able to do this. I guess it is just time for the next step in our journey. Speaking of steps, Finn started walking this morning. OMG. Go, go, go. Yeah! So anyway, there's just a lot going on over here. It's like crazy. They literally grow up before your eyes and it goes so fast and I can't believe it. In my mind, he should still be this little squishy, little squish ball, which memories keep popping up on my phone and they're like my favorite thing ever because he's so freaking cute. But yeah, it feels like yesterday and now he is almost 14 months old. So it's crazy. It's hard to keep up with all of it. It's a lot, but it's the best. I just, oh, I just love him so much. Oh, I just love him so much. He's so cute. So anyway, that is my story. That is my breastfeeding weaning update. If you've been through something similar, I would love to hear from you. I'm also curious to know if you're someone who kind of went through something similar and your supply dipped, did it increase? Like if you keep trying, does it, does it actually go up when you're at this point? I know that that works when you're like in the middle of breastfeeding, but I don't know how it works if you're kind of towards the end of your journey. So I would love to hear about your experiences and you can share them in the comments below. Or again, you can reach me on Instagram at newmama underscore Meg, and you can just send me a direct message. You can slide into my DMs. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful for you. I know for me personally when I hear a story of someone who's been through something similar it just makes me feel a little bit better you kind of know that you're not alone and you're not the only one who's going through something like this which for me makes a big difference and I hope it does for you too but that is it I'll keep you posted on this whole situation and we'll see how it all kind of plays out maybe it's not over maybe I'm just overreacting I don't know but as it stands now it definitely seems like we're coming closer to the end so Anyway, it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be fine. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, sorry, I'm done now. With that, I will see you next week. Don't forget to like the video and feel free to share it with anyone who you might think would benefit from watching this video and hearing my story. But I will see you next week. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.